Like many of us out there, photography is something that gives us great satisfaction and we choose our cameras carefully. This is my camera story. I have always been in the hunt for a good picture. I got my first Nikon back in 1967. It was the classic F. And I have upgraded uh, 9 or 10 times to newer Nikons over the years. That compulsion to document stuff with our cameras is really a virus, and we know it. What is it about taking a good picture? I don't know. I just have to do it. Back in 1951 or 52, my very first camera was a Kodak Brownie Target. It took 620 size film, and of course, it had no controls. Uh, it was just a box camera. Then uh, came a folding camera that uh, was a family camera. I don't know where it came from exactly. It used 116 roll film, and it was an adjustable camera. So it was in high school when this addiction totally took off, and the school let me use their crown graphic, and that was quite a wonderful experience. My father had a strong interest in photography, and it was 1958 or 59. He surprised me with this gift, the Canaflex 4. Well, Dad showed me this wonderful book on photography. He must have gotten it when he was in the service. Truly a Bible. It covered every conceivable instruction on taking a picture from back in the day when it was all hands-on and all manual. I got a solid grounding in the basics from this book. But now I wanted to shoot using different focal lengths, wide angle, telephotos, but my counterflex didn't have interchangeable lenses. I could only dream about moving up to a Nikon F, which was the pro quality camera of the day. Ah, uh, but the counterflex served me well. I took it everywhere and it took a great picture. Yes, that's right, that counterflex even followed me to Fort Gordon. Yeah, well, there was, of course, no way I could afford to buy a Nikon. And then fate intervened. When in 1967 the Army sent me to Vietnam, I found that Nikons were available in Cameron Bay at the Army PX. Uh, because I was the pay officer for my company, I would fly into Cameron from up in the Highlands once a month to pick up the payroll. I would pick it up, and but before flying back to the mountain, I would always go and check the PX for Nikons. I learned that every month they got 14 of the F's, and if you were lucky, you could buy one when you were there. But they went fast. So I continued to depend upon my trusty Canaflex 4 to feed the need. On one visit to the PX, I noticed there were no Nikons there, but they did have a 35mm Nikon lens available. Well, I bought that 35 millimeter Nikon lens and my buds all kidded me because I had no camera to go with it. A month later, well, by now the guy behind the counter at the Cameron PX knew me and he said a new shipment just came in, but they were still over in the PX warehouse. I talked him into taking me over there and he handed me a box with my new Nikon F. I paid him on the spot. No questions asked. And that's how I got started with Nikons as my go-to camera. And I used that combination uh, for many, many years and added lenses until finally, years later, 
the metering housing uh, died and uh, be decided it was time to upgrade to a newer model. And of course, the great thing about Nikon is all of their lenses over the years for, uh, worked on all of their, practically all of the different model Nikons that they made. And of course, I stopped using film when digital cameras came out, and I've gone through quite a few Nikon digital cameras. But then I had a great sudden urge to use film again, and I was in the hunt for that classic Tri-X green and sharp contrast. I still have two film cameras, so I got out the N90. Using the software applications in my computer, I just couldn't quite duplicate that Tri-X look that I was after. You know, that salt and pepper grain. Huh. Well, I have no interest okay. in processing my own film at home. I haven't oh. been in a darkroom in at least 30 years. The good news is there's two custom labs here in Albuquerque and they do process Tri-X. I bought a few rolls. I've got an excellent film scanner, so that first roll was scanned right into the computer. Well, everything looked great. I loaded uh, Tri-X in my N90 and I shot with the 35mm lens and messed around with filters. It was fun. But then I noticed something. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Well, I didn't see them at first, but then I became aware of these long scratches on all of the negatives. What the hey? Where did this happen? How did this happen? Look at that. Could it be foreign particles inside the camera? Most likely, I would think, as an old developer, that it was a dirty squeegee in the lab. They put my negatives in this long plastic sleeve, and that seems to me to be a very suspicious source of scratches, because they're very long, and they run the entire length of the film strip. Well, because everything is digital these days, you can clean up a dust mark or a scratch on a negative uh, digitally in the computer. But, of course, if the scratch is running across someone's face, well, that takes a little bit more effort. And why would I need to do that? So it looks like shooting film has some unforeseen disadvantages that puts a slight damper on the results. I have no desire to do darkroom work again, so this is very concerning and very, very upsetting. A custom lab gives me this? Wait a minute. But no, it won't stop me from taking pictures with Tri-X. It made me think for a while that this might force me to start processing my own negatives. Yeah, well, I, I canned that idea in about a New York minute. Those scratches were either created in the camera on the film plane with some dust particles there, or in the lab when they slipped my negatives into this long plastic sleeve. That could have been it. Or the other thing is maybe it was a bad squeegee when the, on the drying rack when they were squeegeeing off excess water. True, getting back to film photography and specifically Tri-X uh, was a primary compulsion here, but uh, I also wanted to test out an old, very old lens, this 35mm uh, micro Nikkor S, which I bought back in 1967. And I think it's pretty obvious that it actually is an outstanding lens and does quite well. Of course, I had to modify it to make it work with the newer um, uh, metering systems that Nikon uses. But 
I had long ago taken that old lens to a repair shop and they were able to modify it and make it into an AI uh, compliant lens. So just to eliminate the possibility that those scratches were actually caused by the camera, I switched cameras and then shot a, a new roll of film using my other manual focus uh, camera, the Nikon FM2. Two rolls of film, color and black and white, uh, in the FM2, and I told that lab, the same lab, not to enclose the developed film strip in those plastic sleeves. There were no scratches on either one of the two developed rolls. Well, I'm pretty sure that the camera didn't cause the scratch problem, so that leaves me with greatly suspecting that the f lab sliding the film strip into the plastic sleeve was the real issue. Unless, of course, the lab was using squeegees that were not really clean. Yeah, well, I guess I should hope I don't create new scratches when I slide my negatives into these negative storage pages. My old school 35mm Nikon S, 57 years later, still delivers. It has incredible depth of field, it is sharp and simple, and if you need to, you can zoom with it. Just use your feet. <laughs> 